was good to be home. You know, it's especially good to be home in a time of crisis because tough times force us to return to the fundamentals. And there's nothing more fundamental than home. Now, many of you are visitors to New Orleans, but believe me, it won't take four years for the Crescent City to be forever in your blood. So I feel in a way that we are all home tonight. It was Dr. King's timeless activism that fostered our modern way of relating to one another. Yes, we are here tonight empowered with the feeling that if we want to, we can speak truthfully to one another. If we want to, we can work together. We can rely on one another because Dr. King's actions made his dream our reality. And this rebuilding of New Orleans gives us the perfect opportunity to see if we're ready to extend the legacy of Dr. King and the civil rights movement and understand the moment that you're in. I want you all to realize, all you young people, that the final chapter of that movement still waits for a generation with the courage to write it. That's why I say we are all home tonight. We are all home because Dr. King led the charge to victory over regressive, ignorant traditions that had long gone unchallenged. Because he was unwavering in presenting compelling arguments to make real the promises of the Constitution. Because he never succumbed to hopelessness and showed all of us what one citizen can achieve when armed with an evangelical zeal for freedom and a first-class education. Though he is almost always reduced to a dreamer today, let me let you know that Dr. King was an achiever, a most powerful exemplar of action. His last book is entitled, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community? It is a question that is most appropriate for us in this moment. You see, there are shadows chaos all around us. Dr. King worked in the shadow of slavery and discrimination. We are in the shadow of the worst natural disaster to ever befall America. His challenge was to reverse 80 years of legalized apartheid, a veritable way of life right here in our land of freedom. Our challenge is merely to rebuild a great city in times of unbelievable political callousness and corruption. Even in these times, there are still neighbors that will turn their backs on neighbors. There are many who are doing unbelievable acts of heroism. Of course, those are the things that we should celebrate. But let us not, in our zeal to celebrate our rebuilding, lose sight of all the things that go on all the time that remind us so much of the tragedies of our past. Through a tireless, single-minded campaign, to expose lies and sanctioned injustice. Dr. King never lost faith in the ability of humans to behave better. He didn't settle, he succeeded. Now certainly his single-mindedness is what is required of us at this time to rebuild New Orleans. Don't settle, succeed. Catchy slogans aside, when we look around here we see destruction, anguish, and uncertainty. Let's look deeper into ourselves and find possibility. Most of you have returned at a time when many would have stayed away. And now that you are here, you have the opportunity to set a new tone. Not only a new tone for New Orleans, but believe it or not, a new tone for our nation. And if you are vocal enough and intelligent enough, a new tone for the entire world. Don't doubt yourself. Remember, only 56 men signed the Declaration of Independence, of which Ben Franklin said, we must all hang together, or assuredly, we shall all hang separately. <laughs> now, a few hanging together can lead a nation to change. You know, we love to patronize young people with slogans like, the young will lead the way. 
Actually, the young very seldom lead anything. <laughs> it's been quite some time since a younger generation pushed an older one to a higher standard. Think about that. It's been quite some time. You know, my daddy thought, no, actually, he expected that my brothers and I and our generation would make the world a better place. He was 26 years old before he could ride on the front of a streetcar. He was correct in his belief that things would be better for us and that we could make things better because he had lived in an America of continual social progress. Depression followed prosperity. Segregation was followed by integration and so on. 